Good morning. It's great to be able to uh, visit with you and to study some things in God's eternal word today. I really appreciate the fact that we live in a country where we're able to, to open the Bible and study together on, on social media and that there's not a problem with that. Thank God that we have such a privilege, such an honor to be able to do so. And so I, I'm thankful that you're a part of that, that study together. Last week we started a study on the topic of, of great questions for us to answer. We looked at the question, where did we come from? And today, I want to take the second one of those great questions to talk about why are we here? What is the purpose of, of God creating man and putting them mankind on this, on this earth? Before get beginning in that study, let me take the, the time to invite you to, if you live anywhere in the Lone Oak area, <clears throat> to worship with us at Lone Oak at the Palm Street Church uh, this coming Sunday. We would love to have you. We, we will meet for Bible classes at 9.30 where we'll be studying in John chapter 6. And then at 10.30, we'll meet for worship to God and we'll sing and pray and commune together. And then the sermon, the Lord willing, will be about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What an amazing topic, and I hope you can be here and, and be a part of that study and that it might be something that would bless your life for God as we study together. Today, think with me about that topic. Why are we here? Why did God put us on this earth? Now, first of all, we need to go back to that creation story where God tells us some things about why he put us here. In Genesis chapter 1, look down with me, if you will, beginning in verse number 26. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over all the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. And God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And so God said, well, here's my purpose for creating mankind. It is that you might rule over everything that I have created. And then he'll tell the story in Genesis 2 about putting man in that beautiful garden of Eden, a paradise, and how that man was there to dress and to keep the garden. And when man sinned, he and, and his wife both were driven from that beautiful garden never to be allowed to go back in. Because of sin entering in the world, we, we lost some of the privileges and the blessings. But God set about to bring salvation to us from the very time that that sin entered into this world because he loved us and longed for us to have that redemption that is in him. I want you to notice a later text about 
uh, this same kind of, of thought. In Psalms chapter 8, David is, is writing about uh, the whole purpose of mankind. And listen as he writes to us in, in this great chapter. He said, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the, the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold um, against all your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Now listen, when I consider the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars that you have made, what is man that, that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. You made him to be a little lower than the angels. And you crowned him with glory and honor. Now watch. He says that you made them, that is mankind, Rulers over the works of your hands, you put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky, of the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So, from the beginning, God made mankind to be in charge of the creation. He put us here with that purpose of being the ones that would oversee, if you will, the very creation itself. Now, I want to point out something. Since God set about to bring salvation to mankind. And he sent his son into the world that he might be our redeemer. He gave us a very different and deeper purpose as, as time went by. When Jesus came into this world and, and gave himself as an offering to take away the sins of mankind, that he actually took upon himself our sins and went to the cross to die that our sins might be forgiven. That when he was raised from the dead and, and as the, the conqueror over death, he walked among mankind for 40 days on this earth. And just as he was about to ascend back to the Father and to sit down at the right hand of God. He gave man a new charge, a new purpose, if you will. It's found in Matthew chapter 28. Just before Jesus ascended, he called his disciples to him. This is, this is really after he had met with Simon Peter and, and challenged him to be one that would feed his flock, that would, would be one to shepherd the flock of God on this world or in this world. But in Matthew 28, just before he would ascend, he would say to them, All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I want to read that same text to you in in a very different translation. 
in the translation called God's Word. I think it helps us to understand this text in a way that, that probably uh, we would never get it by looking at it on our own. In Matthew 28, beginning in verse number 18, look at it in God's Word translation. When Jesus came near, he spoke to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So, wherever you go, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do everything I have commanded you. And remember that I am always with you until the end of time. Now, now, what I want you to see in this, it seems like when I read that in, in most all of our translations of that text, that he's commanding us by that authority that he has to go into different places. But the reality is, in the original text, it's, the word go is not a command. It's, it's literally as you go about. The idea is, I know you're going to travel about in the world. As you go about from one place to another, make disciples. Wherever you go, in all the different nations or cultures, make disciples. Well, Lord, how do we do that? You baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and you teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then I'll be with you. I'll be with you all the days, every day that you're here until the end of time. Now, this changes that whole question of why am I here? If I'm, I'm just a man or a woman and not a Christian, God says your purpose is to take care and, and to rule the earth that has been made and you're over everything in this creation. But if I'm a Christian, God says here's your purpose. It is to go about in the world and wherever you go, if you're in, in this town or that one or among this culture or that one, wherever you are, I want you to go about making disciples. I want you to strive to show people how to follow Jesus in the world. Tell them the story of Jesus and strive to lead them to be followers of His. And, and when they come to believe in Him and to know that, that He really is the Christ, the Savior of the world, I want you to take that one that is the believer and baptize them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then you take that one that has been baptized and you teach them how to live for me. Teach them how to observe everything that I have commanded you so that what I command you, you teach them is for them as well. Teach them how to live by everything that I have given you in the Word of God. And then the amazing promise. Listen, I'm going to be with you. Jesus said, I'm going to walk by your side. I'll be with you every day as you live that life and carry out that mission in the world. What an amazing promise and command. We are people with a purpose.